the sun, a source of light and fuel for all of life on planet Earth. Like any other precious resource, the energy the sun provides, directly or indirectly, is not to be wasted needlessly. Animals rest or sleep as much as they can whenever possible, some more so than others. Yet, when the need arises, these animals can spring into motion. This movement, and the manner in which it is accomplished, is the topic of this episode of Evolution Alive. The way that all of these animals move is dependent on their form, specifically the structure of their legs. The form of their legs is in turn dependent on their function in a certain environment. Form fits function and function fits form. The form of my leg, for example, is designed to function as a sturdy pillar to support my body. Because people only have two legs, the muscles of these legs have to be strong, as do the bones. Our feet must also be strong and spread out to distribute all of our weight evenly. Evolution has shaped the human leg so that it can fulfill this specific function. Other animals have legs of very different structure and form because they serve a very different function. One such animal is the one standing right behind me, the zebra. Although smaller and fatter than its speedy cousin, the horse, it is still an excellent example of how evolution can shape an animal's form to fit its lifestyle. The leg bones of the zebra are long and slender towards the hoof, but short and thick near the hips. Similarly, the leg muscles of the zebra are large and powerful at the hips, but nearly non-existent below the knee. This odd design has created a creature very well adapted for moving rapidly over long distances. Despite their impressive specialization, a zebra's legs are remarkably versatile appendages. As you can see, the behavior and lifestyle of the zebra is reflected in the form of its legs. But what can its feet tell us? Feet can also give us a clue as to how that animal behaves. Footprints or tracks can also give us a clue as to how those feet are shaped. Here you can see the shape of the zebra's hoof. This hoof is actually part of the zebra's toe, the only toe a zebra has on its foot. Humans walk flat on their feet, cats and dogs walk on their toes, but zebras walk right on their tiptoes, just like a ballerina. All of the other mammals who walk in this way are referred to as ungulates. Because the zebra has only one toe, it is called an odd-toed ungulate. There is another member of this group, one which has three toes instead of one. Here you can see one of its footprints. Despite their close evolutionary relationship, the rhinoceros has diverged considerably in form from the zebra, due entirely to the evolutionary pressures that have shaped it. The foot of the rhino is large and broad, with a thick fleshy pad positioned behind its three toes. These feet serve as stable platforms on which the rhino can rest its considerable bulk. These feet also work as shock absorbers, for when a rhinoceros is angry or frightened, it can move its heavy body at surprisingly fast speeds. The legs also aid in supporting this wide range of rhino locomotion. Unlike the zebra, the leg muscles of the rhinoceros are strong and broad from hips to toes. The same goes for its bones, which are thick and robust throughout the leg. In the rhinoceros, we can see an organism well designed for moving a large body at a variety of speeds. These two animals, the zebra and the rhinoceros, are just two examples of the many strange and wonderful forms shaped by evolution. In the future, who knows what types of fascinating creatures will evolve on this planet? Who can predict what forms of fleet feet and lumbering limbs will set these animals in motion? Thank you.